Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready for us to call forth our daily bread today? Let's say these words and say it with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, today is Friday, and just before we go into the broadcast, I would like to encourage you to share this message with your friends, with your contacts. Just share. Let, 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 let this truth come to everybody around you. Praise God. And also, you can like our YouTube channel and, and put on the notification because this message goes up very early in the morning on YouTube. So you'll be among the first that will get it. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you because you are our glory and the lifter up of our head. By you, we are not ashamed because you are with us. So Lord, I know even now burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, something is going on. The Spirit of God is moving upon your heart and miracles are taking place in your life already. Now, as, as those miracles begin to come, share it. I would like to hear from you. Praise God. You, you can send us a message on whatever channel or whatever means you're listening, or you get our number and our number is on the screen. You can always call, you can always send a message and tell us how this broadcast is affecting or, or, or is being a blessing to you. It's important you share praise god like the bible said let the redeemed of the lord say it praise god let him shout it let him not keep quiet now we 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 are looking at how god is blessing us abundantly supernatural provision he's making he's made available to us and then we are looking at this and i said i'm sharing all this with you that your heart will rest on his truth so when the blessing begins to come physically you will have a heart to carry now that's the problem with a lot of people they want the blessing of god but they don't carry enough truth in them to weigh or to hold the blessing that god actually intends to give to you and now sometimes they pray at this, you know, like they say, let's storm heaven. They storm heaven and trouble heaven. And God actually releases a fraction of the blessing. And when that happens, they are off. Because their heart couldn't carry what God was doing. The blessing of God is beyond giving you money. It's beyond filling your bank account. It's beyond business opportunities. Every opportunity God opens up for you carries a purpose. And if you don't make up your mind already that you are going to reveal his glory on the earth, the money is going to get into your hands and it's going to wash, fly away. Because that's what money is. It has wings. Its character is to fly. Whether in the hands of a believer, whether in the hands of an unbeliever, money's character is to fly away. <laughs> so in the hands of a believer, when money is flying away, he's creating room for more to come. But in the hands of an unbeliever, money is flying away because that's that's it can't stay in your hands. And, and more may just not come. Praise God. All right, then. So I'll share with you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we saw what the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is yesterday. And what is it? That Jesus became poor. So that you through his poverty might be made rich and i was explaining something to you yesterday that because of this because of this sacrifice that jesus made for us god made him a high priest to do what to administer this blessing you need to understand that and that's why he said in psalm chapter 110 that's psalm 110 and verse 4 he says the lord has sworn 
and will not relent. What it is where it says, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, in this order, you know, when he says you are this person, you are a king according to this order, it just simply means that it's according to the character of this person. So when he says you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, it means after the character of Melchizedek. So if someone have seen or tasted the reign or the priesthood of Melchizedek, then he says the person will understand what your priesthood is going to be like. Now that just simply means when he says after the order. You know, in modern days time, you say the school of thought, you know, he belongs to this school of thought. He belongs to this, this uh, sect. Because there, there is a way they believe, there is a way, sometimes there is, there is even a way they dress. So you say, oh, he is a um, whatever, after this order. Oh, okay, don't wonder he's like that. So it's the same thing. So when God says, G, talking about Jesus, he said, you will be a priest forever. Now notice it says forever, meaning this is not a priesthood that can change. And he says, it is after the order of Melchizedek. So go study the pattern of Melchizedek's priesthood. You will understand the kind of priesthood that Jesus is. Now, let me show you something in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter number 5. Because it's important we look at this now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in Hebrews chapter 5, it says, So, verse 6, As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Talking about Jesus now. And it says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, I want you to follow this now. Though he were a son, Yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, one of the things Jesus suffered, and notice, he suffered it willingly. One of the things Jesus suffered is by him becoming poor, so that we through his poverty might be made rich. So he was rich, he was supposed to enjoy everything he, he had, but he said, no, he is going to suffer poverty. And the reason he was going to suffer poverty is because of us. So, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I, I pray the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened right now. So he says, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Now, he wasn't just made perfect because God said, you are my son. Now, nah, he, he went through the process. That's what he's telling us. He went through the process. He subjected himself through the process. So he says, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him, called of God and an high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered, seeing ye are, you are dull of hearing. He says, hey, Jesus subjected himself through many things. Now, and, and he was explaining that to us. He says, when he was going through all those things, he, he got to the point where he cried out to God because he knew God was able to save him. But then he says, God heard him. And when God heard him, what did God do? See this in the book of Luke. He says, God sent angels to come and minister to him. So when Jesus cried out that day, angels came and they began to minister to him. So, so when Jesus was going through the process, he got to that point where it was just too painful. Hey, guess what? It was even when they were lashing him. No, it was in that garden of Gethsemane that he cried and said, Father, this thing is too painful. It, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Now, this is Jesus who was supposed to walk in glory. 
But hey, right now he subjected himself to all this pain of neglect and all that. He became poor. And that's the point we are concentrating on right now for the purpose of this, this teaching. He, he subjected himself to poverty. And he was poor. He was made poor. See, he was made poor. Now he says, because of all this, he became perfect and he became the author of eternal salvation. Because the Bible says he is able to save to the uttermost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then he says, he called, he called him, God called him a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, the, the Melchizedek priesthood is an eternal priesthood. Now, I'm just introducing this part today. Next week, we're going to expound what the priesthood of Melchizedek is. And then I'll begin to show you how you participate in that priesthood. Listen, the reason you lack is because you lack understanding. <laughs> the reason you lack stuff, the reason you are in want, the reason you are in so much need is because you lack understanding. And by the grace of God, that's what God has commanded me to bring to you. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit. He will fill your heart with so much understanding that, that you, you will walk with the Lord with full assurance because you understand his operation. Praise God. So Jesus was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek's priesthood is an eternal priesthood, not a priesthood that can be changed. It can never be changed. And today, we relate with him as our high priest. But many of God's children don't even know how to function within this priesthood. We don't know. We say it, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So what does it mean? Why did God choose the order of Melchizedek? Because there is another order, the order of Aaron. Nah, he said, no, 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 no. That priesthood is not the perfect priesthood. The priesthood is the one that was made in heaven. And that's the one that is after the order of Melchizedek. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just sense in my spirit that I should pray for someone right now. If you would just stretch your hands towards me. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, the heaven is about to burst open over your life. You are going to begin to see favor from right, left, center. You are going to, you know, you know what it is. You turn to the right, there is favor there for you. you you're going to, opportunities are going to start opening up for you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, dear Lord Jesus, Allah Gabaya, just stretch your hands towards me right now as, as an act of faith. Now, why do we do things like this? It's very simple. Because I'm praying for you right now. There are angels standing around you and there are angels here. Now, when you do what I say you do, the angels around you, and just know that you are connecting yourself to this grace. Now, what does that mean? It means they are going to see to it that this prayer works in your life. Now, that's why we say things like stretch your hands towards me or put your hands on your chest. Now, just something physical that the angels will recognize you. So are you ready? Stretch your hands towards me now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, as you have commanded right now, I release the grace for supernatural favor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the grace for an abundant supply. I release the grace right now. Someone's life is about changing right now. I, I see an opportunity coming your way that will try. I'm, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying you receiving money. I'm saying you get it. It's an opportunity that will bring you into the place of wealth. Into the place of wealth. 
you are going to begin to control wealth. You are going to be placed in charge of, of, of something that many people's life is going to be depending on. Hear me. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by the spirit of the living God. Receive it right now. It is coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's coming to you. And I would like to hear from you. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up. Hey, listen. Receive this blessing. It is yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have the best weekend ever. Listen, be expectant. Every time your phone rings, something good is going to come. <laughs> Praise God. I love you and God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.